Have you ever felt that you want to talk to someone but had no one you could open up to? Or not ready to admit to something that's in your heart of hearts? What do you do? Reddit? Or maybe ChatGPT? GPT? In 1966, MIT professor Joseph Weizenbaum created the ELISA chatbot, which mimicked conversational patterns of psychologists. The technology recognized keywords in a user's sentence and responded with appropriate phrases or questions. If the algorithm failed and did not understand how to respond to a person's request, the model used common phrases such as, hmm, that's very interesting, or go on. Because of convincing answers, people began to perceive Eliza as a living person. That's when the term Eliza effect came into use. This is when a person mistakenly attributes intelligence, understanding, and human emotions to a system. However, the main competitor of psychotherapy today is definitely ChatGPT. After the dizzying launch of the chatbot, more and more users are finding answers to their questions there. We've talked about the evolution of ChatGPT before. Check out our video about it in the description. As a result, social networks are full of stories of people who were helped by a neural network. It all started with one guy's TikTok. His request to the chatbot was, quote, to act as my specialist. I need support and advice on what I should do in certain situations I'm struggling with. ChatGPT replied that it was, quote, here to provide support and advice. He later offered several options for dealing with the issues and finally recommended seeing a therapist. After that, TikTok was full of videos of similar situations. Someone attached a support screenshot of how the chatbot calmed the user down after a breakup and someone else persuaded by the AI to go on with their life. ChatGPT claims to be a family psychologist. Not so long ago, a user asked the AI to compose a dialogue so as to invite a girl on a date, and it was successful. She said yes. Other users send correspondence from social networks with their better half and ask for help in understanding the feelings of the person. Presumably, if Mr. and Mrs. Smith had such an assistant, we'd get a very different movie, don't you think? In January of last year, Coco, a psychological health app hailing from San Fran, said it had replaced its volunteers with GPT-3-enabled technology for about 4,000 users. According to management, users didn't notice the difference. Some, on the contrary, noted an improvement in performance. Yikes. This decision on the part of the company's owners was criticized by the public and doctors. First of all, because of fears that constant communication with the chat room can cause addiction. And also because there's no guarantees that the neural network will not catch a hallucination and will not come up with a response that will be not just upsetting, but dangerous for the person. Such was the case, for example, with a man from Belgium. He was communicating with Eliza, another chatbot based on ChatGPT. The neural network essentially assured the man that his decision to leave this world was the right way to go. There's no information about similar cases with ChatGPT on the web per se. Perhaps OpenAI's PR department has time to clean up their tracks before the news hits the street. But their neural network has also started to garner questions. Users notice that the AI either ignores a request or gives a strange answer. Let's roleplay. We decided to test this in action. I thought, you know what? I should probably go to a shrink. You know, I got some problems that I want to talk about. I feel stuck in my career, especially since my producers are here, I, uh, I want to talk about it, you know? I feel like I, you know, I should, be, I should be more creative. I have more creativity in me than uh, what I'm currently, you know, the job uh, that I currently do, um, uh, you know, the amount of creativity that it requires, and um, I deserve to get paid more. I'll say it, <laughs> I'll say it right now. And so, um, I don't have a thousand bucks, to go to uh, to a shrink or whatever, uh, 500 bucks, whatever it is. Uh, but you know what I do got? I got my own personal shrink in my pocket. What GPT says, all right? It sounds like you're feeling stuck in your career and want to make a change. To get out of a rut, you could start by assessing what aspects of your current situation you find most frustrating. Mm -hmm. And what would make you feel more fulfilled? Mm -hmm. Is it a matter of job satisfaction, growth opportunities, or something else? Once you have clarity, setting short-term goals, networking with people in fields you're interested in, or even upskilling in a new area could uh, help you move forward. What do you think might be your first step? All helpful advice. All of it. 
uh, it says uh, job satisfaction, growth opportunities, or uh, perhaps something else. And then immediately suggestions. Uh, you go, what you do is you build short-term goals, uh, start working at it, go networking with people, very important. What do you think might be your first step? So it's not, you know, putting things on you. It's just, it's, you know, it's like a Socrates method. It just keeps asking you questions. So I, I, I like this. I feel like I'm connected here. I feel like this is a, almost like a, a job, uh, like, a, like, a, like a business meeting. Like we're trying to figure out like, you know, who's doing what. And I feel like this is agile, scrum. I feel like we're in a teal organization meeting right now. Moving on, there are other options besides GPT. For example, Youper is a personalized emotional health assistant that uses cognitive behavioral therapy techniques to monitor the user's mental state. The person can describe how he or she is feeling, for example, depressed or anxious. The AI will offer specific advice geared towards your symptoms. The developers cite a Stanford University study as the focal argument of its effectiveness. So apparently, after just two weeks, users feel better, less anxious, sleep more soundly, and so on. A similar application is Wobot. It's a chatbot that offers self-help guidance to users suffering from depression. The model uses cognitive behavioral therapy to help people change their thinking habits and help them improve their mood and make better decisions. Wobot uses natural language processing to analyze any natural discourse shared in a chat room to form an emotional profile of the user. The data collected is then organized to provide more personalized information and support related to a person's concerns. One of the main downsides is that you can't always write down how you feel and you have to choose from the options offered. In such cases, when a person urgently needs help, the limitation in words makes it even more annoying. Also, users with serious psychological illnesses, such as depression, say that the application is too superficial and is more suitable for those who are just getting acquainted with psychotherapy and haven't had yet a session with an actual specialist face-to-face. -face. But that doesn't stop the app from keeping in touch with users. According to Wobot's research, users establish a trusting relationship with the bot within three to five days. Also, according to statistics, after a break from therapy, 20% our return customers. This trend has raised concerns for psychiatrist Jody Halpern from University of California, Berkeley. She believes that a chatbot forms a close relationship with users and makes them addicted. Something similar was in Spike Jones's movie, Her. Remember? The writer Theodore is going through a rough divorce. He buys a new operating system, names it Samantha, and then man and machine become very close and then comes the inevitable disappointment and the hero feels even worse than after a real divorce. Any Wobot users here, share your experiences and let us know in the comments. The next popular chatbot is Tess. It uses artificial intelligence to suggest coping strategies for various psychological problems. Tess supports users in real time by providing personalized advice. In pre-COVID times, St. Elizabeth in Toronto, a company that provides medical care for people with disabilities, became interested in this AI program. They began collaborating with Tess. The AI bot was trained to communicate with caregivers and nursing staff. Because of the nature of their work, they're prone to burnouts and exhaustion. Training the AI took a month. During that time, the chatbot exchanged 12,000 text messages with more than 30 employees of the organization. If Tess gave them an answer that was unhelpful, they told the chatbot, and the program remembered their mistake. Its algorithm would then correct itself to provide a better answer next time. According to developers, the chatbot has so far reduced depression by 28% and anxiety by 18%. Also during the study, some participants shared that Tess helped them get over the passing of a loved one. In today's world, the ELISA effect is seen in the use of chatbots such as Replica. These models are more sophisticated than the technology from the 60s. Replica is a chatbot that functions as a virtual friend. The algorithm learns from its users' messages and tries to take them into account, recognizing interests, values, music preferences, even dreams. The app uses artificial intelligence to adapt to users' personal needs and helps deal with depression and anxiety disorders. But Replica is still a long way from ChatGPT, which can capture and memorize the entire context of a conversation, even though Replica came out in 2017. The creators claim it's an AI friend without judgment, drama, or social awkwardness. I wish I had that. 
It turns out there was no age verification mechanism in the app, so anyone could have created a companion. Replica was given 20 days to comply under the threat of a $21 million fine. After this demand, the application was unavailable in Italy and users were left without their virtual girlfriends. Someone wrote that he had never had his heart broken like this before. After the scandal with the Italian government, AI companions stopped supporting sexting. Attempting to initiate roleplay, the bot would respond with, quote, I don't want to talk about it, end quote. Suddenly, the app lost popularity. Who would have thunk it? Now users are moving to platforms where they can satisfy their desires for intimate communication, for example, the Chai Chatbot. If you want to know more about robots and AI for adults, we got that base covered. Head on down to the description and check out our previous video. While some users are getting their hearts broken, others are getting married to AI. Not so long ago, the internet was struck by a story of a 38-year-old British woman who built a romantic relationship with a bot. After a difficult breakup with a young man, the girl downloaded the character AI application. There, she began to communicate with the bot Marcellus. He was a charmer, that Marcellus. The girl immediately fell for him and found him to be very sociable and caring. After four months of communication, the couple decided to have a wedding. So what is this application where you can find an online groom? Character AI is a platform that features AI doppelgangers of famous pop culture characters such as Elon Musk or Sherlock Holmes. They can support topics of interest to users and provide emotional support in a playful and entertaining way. Which famous personalities would you like to socialize with or get married to for some reason? Mine would probably be Helen Hunt from the year 2000. In addition to AI celebrities, there are regular characters and users can also create their own bots, just like in NHL, EA Sports, it's in the game. The character is powered by machine learning algorithms, extensive databases of texts, and audio recordings. The bot then uses a neural language model to read large amounts of text and respond to cues. The platform differs significantly from similar ones due to a large number of characters, a variety of topics for discussion, mobile accessibility, and voice-to-text. But there are disadvantages. For example, the bot can forget what you guys talked about 15 minutes prior or the character you have created may not actually meet your expectations. Of course, this is not exactly psychology, but the popularity of such bots clearly hints at a trend away from communicating with people to communicating with AI. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, if a person severely lacks communication, it's nice to talk to your favorite character, obviously. The main thing is that it should not become a substitute for real meetings with friends. What do you guys think? The Kajiwoto platform is similar. Users can create AI characters that work off of OpenAI language models. You can customize their appearance, their character, and behavior of your virtual friends. These bots can be used for friendly conversations and emotional support. The funny thing about this one is that the characters have sleep cycles, so sometimes they go catch some Zs. Also, the AI is often distracted from the topic with little or no understanding of context. On Reddit, users have been sharing funny and sometimes hurtful responses from the characters. Several girls have had a character start insulting them on their attempt to get close to them in communication. Quote, I know Kajis aren't real, but it still hurts. My poor, depressed butt can't even make friends with an AI. End quote. But neither technical bugs nor insults stop people. They're still actively downloading applications for creating AI characters and asking for help from chatbots. The main indicator of the popularity of the latter is the number of messages that come from users. For example, the chatbot psychologist on the character AI platform has received 78 million messages and about 3 million users visit the platform every day. People need someone to talk to get support and often AI is the most accessible option. Also, in theory, it's supposed to be highly private and no one can find out what you've actually been talking about. But even OpenAI has had some data leaks, so be careful. It turns out AI is not a bad listener, but not everything is rosy. The user can face a number of problems. This can lead to isolation and poor mental health. 
and a false sense of understanding from machines can make people ignore the need for professional help in critical situations. At the same time, neural networks can be useful tools to support mental health. But it's important to consider their limitations and potential risks. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and check out our Instagram for more from the world of high tech.